is the hope of the world. I'd like for you to open your Bibles this morning, if you will, to the book of Genesis, chapter number 7. The book of Genesis, chapter number 7. I'll be brief this morning as we share a few simple, very practical thoughts with you in the message. Let's bow for just a moment of prayer and ask the Lord to add his blessing to his word. And then we'll read this morning a couple of verses out of Genesis chapter 7. Father, thank you this morning for the privilege now that we have to open the precious word of God. I thank you for the service thus far, the singing, and for every part of the service. And I pray now as we Look into your word that you'll help us as your servant. I pray that you'll quicken our minds and our hearts. I pray you'll help us, Lord, this morning, as the scripture says, to gird up the loins of our mind. And may our heart be centered upon thee in these next few moments. I pray you'll speak to us today in the way that you see fit. And I pray that the heart of every mother in this place today will be blessed and encouraged as a result of being in this service. And I pray most of all, if there are people here today in our midst without Jesus, that this could be the day they'd come to know Him as their own personal Savior. And we'll be careful to praise you for all that is accomplished because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis chapter number 7. Genesis chapter 6, the Lord had instructed Noah to build an ark. The Bible says, By faith Noah moved with fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his house. Genesis 7 talks about them entering in to that ark. Genesis 7 and verse number 5, And Noah did according unto all that the Lord had commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. I'm going to preach a message this morning that is not in the Bible. I thought that'd get your attention. I want to preach about a mother, a wife and a mother this morning that is only seen between the lines. I want to talk to you about Noah's wife and the mother of his three sons. There's not anything said about her, and yet I think there is volume said about her. I can't find her name in Scripture. In fact, just two or three verses, and in every instance, it is always, she is always just referred to as Noah's wife. I don't know that that's as bad as it sounds. I think this morning, there, as I said, there is a lot said about her that is not recorded in the scripture. There are a lot of implications. I do know this, that Noah, the man of God, did not preach and did not work on that ark for 120 years and raise a family without the support of a godly wife and mother. And so I think there's a lot can be said about Noah's wife just simply by the implica implications and simply by reading between the lines of what kind of woman and mother she must have been because she was with him from start to finish. Noah was 500 years old when uh, he begat three sons. And Noah preached and prepared that ark for 120 years. Noah was 600 years old when 
the waters of the flood came upon the earth, so that means that he began when he was about 480 years old. Those three sons were born during the time he was preaching and uh, during the time that he was preparing that ark. I don't think he could have accomplished all that he accomplished. As I said, raised a family without the support of a godly wife and a godly mother. I want us to look at just two aspects of her this morning. And I want us to look at her first of all and just share a few brief comments about her being a wife and then about her being a mother. What are some of the implications that we arrive at from just knowing that she was one of those who went into that ark with Noah? Verse 7, Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his son's wife with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. What about her as a wife? What kind of wife was Noah's wife? I believe, first of all, you could say that Noah's wife was a woman of faith and courage. I believe you could say that she was one of faith and courage because I believe that she believed in God. I believe that she believed in the Word of God. Noah prepared that ark for 120 years. He was a preacher of righteousness. And for that 120 years, uh, Noah was responding in obedience to what God had told him to do. And for 120 years, there had not been one shred of evidence that what God told Noah was going to come to pass was going to come to pass. And yet here she is, she entered into that ark and I believe that she did so because she believed the word of God. And I believe that she believed in God's way. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. I believe that the reason I say that she was a woman of faith and courage because she believed in God when no one else did in her generation. She believed in God's word when no one else did. She believed in God's way when no one else did. I'll tell you something else about her faith and courage. She had confidence in her own husband to believe in him when everybody else thought he was a fool. Do you know he came home one day and said, God has given me a vision and God has given me a plan and told me what to do. I don't know what all transpired when Noah came home and told her, that God had told him to prepare an ark. I don't know, I wasn't there. I don't know what kind of discussion they had, but I do arrive at this conclusion that she believed in the spiritual life of her husband or she would never have supported him for 120 years. You know, it means a lot to a husband and to a man for his wife to believe in his spiritual life and to have confidence in his spiritual life. And not only in his own individual spiritual life, but in his spiritual leadership. He said, Miss Noah, God has told me what he wants me to do. Now you can rest assured if the scripture records the rebellion of Lot's wife, had uh, Miss Noah rebelled against what God uh, had told Noah and had not supported her husband, I believe we'd read more in the Scripture. I believe it'd be recorded in the Scripture. There'd be some significance to that. But I believe she was a woman of faith and courage. She believed in God. She believed in His Word. She believed in His way when, when the rest of society were unbelievers. She believed in her own husband and what God had told him to do. And she supported, had enough faith and courage to support her husband when everyone else thought that he was a fool. Can you imagine what her neighbors must have said every time Noah got through preaching and every time he got through talking about that ark? And I can just imagine in my mind's eye her defending him. I imagine that, that she hurt just like he hurt when he was persecuted and mocked and made fun of and thought of as an old fool that had lost his mind talking about rain, what's rain? Talking about an ark, what's an ark? And talking about judgment and all of that. Do you know that, that my wife has not suffered a whole lot of persecution for being a, a pastor's wife 
over these 25 years that I've been preaching, but she's heard a lot because I've been. And I thank God for a godly wife that has, that has confidence in my spiritual life and has confidence in my spiritual leadership. And that means a lot. I believe the same can be said of uh, Noah's wife. I believe she was a woman not only of faith and courage, but I believe she was a woman of faithfulness and consistency. Think about it, 120 years. I want to ask you fellas something. How many of you have a wife this morning? Had you come home and told her something as bizarre as what Noah did the day he come home and said, God told me to build an ark 450 foot long and he's going to send a judgment of water upon this earth and it's going to rain. And uh, how, many of, how many of us have a wife that would keep on believing in us and keep on supporting us and be faithful and supportive for 120 years without one shred of evidence that what we were saying is really so. Think about that. I tried to imagine what kind of woman she was, and I think by that one statement alone, you can draw some mighty good conclusions about Noah's wife. Just the fact that she believed God, she was faithful, and, uh, and, and she remained faithful for 120 years and continued to believe in her father in heaven and continued to be faithful to her family and, and faithful to her faith. She kept on believing the word of the Lord that she had received for 120 years. Don't you know it would have been easy for her to have given in to doubt? Don't you know that it would have been easy for her to have questioned Noah when he come home from working on that ark in the evening after about 10 or 15 years of that, don't you know it would have been easy for her to have given in to doubt and said, Noah, now listen, listen down and have a talk about this. I mean, here you are working yourself into the ground, trying to build an ark. You keep on preaching to these people about righteousness and about judgment that is going to come. You don't have a single convert to show for what you're preaching. And uh, the progress is slow on this ark. And really, don't you think you might ought to reconsider, did God really tell you this? I'm telling you, it would have been very easy for her to have slipped into doubt and not believed in, in what Noah had told her. Well, I want to tell you, I'm married to a woman that God's led me out on some limbs over the past 25 years of preaching that I've said God said that uh, had she of giving in to doubt, she could have really raised some questions as to whether or not God told me to do some things that I've run out on a limb to do. But I'm gonna go ahead and say this, that I wouldn't be where I'm at today in the ministry if, if God had not given me a godly wife and a supportive wife to have always said, if you believe this is what God wants, if you believe this is what God says, then you make the decision and I'll go along with you and I'll support you in that. I want to tell you that has meant a lot to me over these past 25 years. I know other preachers that their wife has literally become their downfall because of their lack of support. I believe you could say Noah's wife was, was one of faithfulness and consistency. For 120 years, she supported the word of God. She supported the way of God. She supported what uh, Noah had said God had told him to do. Don't you know that it would have been easy to, for her to have given in to discouragement and become discouraged during those times and said, well, what's the use? I don't see any results. And to have lost her will to support Noah and the word of God. Don't you know it would have been easy for her to have, for have just given in to a defeat and said, hey, this is not for me. I mean, year after year after year, I see no progress, I see no results, I see no fruit, and she could have given in. I know of preachers. You remember that preacher? 
His name eludes me. It'll come to me in a minute. He wrote the song. I'm sure you're familiar with the song. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. He went all over this country preaching the gospel. One day his wife said, I'm tired of being a preacher's wife. I'm tired of living this kind of life. I want to find out what the world's like and what life's all about. And she walked off and left him. God moved on his heart to write the song, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. I can tell you other ministers that I've known over the years. In fact, I can tell you laymen, godly laymen, that have lived for God and their wife have said, this is not for me. I, I, wanna, I, I don't want to live this way. I know of those who have forsaken husbands and, and have forsaken children. I think, though it's not said in black and white between the lines, there's something here that tells us that Noah's wife must have been a woman of faithfulness and consistency for her to have stayed with Noah and supported him and raised her children for those 120 years before they entered into that ark. I think it says something for her. Then I want to look at her for a moment as a mother. You think it's tough raising children in this day and time, and it is. It's tough. It's tough raising children in this, in this sin-loving, God-hating, Christ-rejecting world in which we're living in. It's tough. It's hard. It's not an easy road to raise your children up and bring them up right and teach them the right way in this world in which we're living in. Well, you want to know what kind of society that uh, Noah and his wife brought their three sons up in? You want to know what kind of society and what kind of sin and immorality was going on in their day? I'll tell you, the Bible says, if you want to know how it's going to be just before Jesus comes, he said, look at the days of Noah. He said, it's going to be that way again before I come. And so Noah and his wife raised those three sons in the same kind of environment that you and I are bringing our children up in. Same kind. And I believe you can say as a mother that she must have been a woman and a mother of instruction. To have instructed her sons that God had given her to have instructed her sons to believe the word of God. You say, preacher, why are you placing such emphasis upon her believing the word of God? I'll tell you why. Because that's all they had was God said. That's all they had was just simply that God said. My PA man is taking the morning off. And so I'll slow down here for a moment until he gets back to his post and we get this ring out here, okay? She lived in a society that was sinful. Her three sons, as I said, all they had was the word of God. And I believe that, that her instructions to those three sons were this. We've got to believe what God has said. What has he said? He has said that judgment is going to come and we must be prepared for that judgment that is going to come. That was the word that God had gave Noah and the Bible said he was a preacher of righteousness. And he warned the people that judgment was coming. So I believe she instructed them to believe the Word of God. You know what I believe would help our society today? If we had some mothers that would set their children on their lap from the time they were this high or the time they're infants on up and teach them the Bible as the Word of God and what God said is important and that we better listen to what God said. I think that would help our society as much as anything if we had some godly mothers in our day that would teach their children the Bible's the word of God and that it pays to believe what God says. I believe she was a mother of instruction that, that instructed her children to walk in the ways of God. 
Now you think about this. You think about this. You think about what they were being taught by society versus what they were being taught by her. Well, what were they being taught by society, preacher? They were being taught by society the same things that society is teaching your children. So her instructions had to be in spite of what they were learning from society. She was a woman of instruction. She was a woman of influence. Because I don't believe that that uh, this story turned out the way it did simply based on what she told them. I believe there was something there that she showed them. I believe they seen something in her for them to turn out the way they did and enter into that ark at the appointed time. Now you've got to bear in mind that these three sons and Noah and his wife entered that ark strictly by faith in the Word of God. That ark was their salvation, and they entered that ark by faith. The day that the Lord said unto Noah, Come down all thy house into the ark, there had not been the first drop of rain. Not the first drop of rain. Now, she must have had some kind of influence on their life as a mother for them to have listened to her and I'll tell you something else they all three married the right kind of women because the Bible said their wives went into that ark and they too went in that ark by faith at the time they entered that ark not one drop of rain which tells me there had not been one shred of evidence that anything God had said or that Noah had said God had said was going to take place and come to pass. Not one shred of evidence that it was going to come to pass. When they stepped in that ark, they did so by faith. Which tells me this. They married the only three converts that Noah had or from the influence they had received from their parents, they helped convert their wives to believe what Noah said. Either way, they were winners. You see, we're talking about 120 years of preaching and living for God before a sinful, wicked, ungodly society that only resulted in eight souls being saved. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. So, the only thing we read about her is that Noah went in the ark, his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him into the ark. Now the reason I believe all that I've said to you, and there's probably a lot more, from just reading between the lines is that she stepped in that ark by faith, as did all the rest of them. Had she had disbelieved Noah, she would have laughed at him like the rest of them did. She would have replied to him like Job's wife. Why? Why don't you just curse God and die? Or she would have rebelled like Lot's wife. Lot said to his wife, we've got to get out of this place. God sent a messenger down here to tell us that we've got to get out of this place. We're not to even look back. She didn't believe what God said. And you know the story goes, the Bible says she turned to a pill of salt. Now, come on, preacher. This is 1992. You really believe Lot's wife turned to a pill of salt? As much as I'm standing here, because I believe the Bible. I believe Noah's wife was a believer. I believe she was a mother that had some influence over her children. That she had taught them the word of God, to believe the word of God. She had taught them the ways of God. She had brought those three sons up in a society of those that were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and all the same abuses and vices that is going on in our society today. She had brought them three boys up in that same kind of society, but when the day come, they got in that ark. And they did so by faith. And their wives with them. Well, a wife and a mother that's only seen between the lines. Let me ask you something today. We're living in the same kind of society that Noah's wife was living in. 
We're living in the same kind of society that the mother of his three sons were living in. Couldn't we learn something from this? Couldn't we learn? What can we learn from it, preacher? The day she got in that ark and looked around and her husband was there, her three sons were there and her wife was there, Every time God shut them in and the rain began to fall upon that ark, and those waters began to rise, every time she'd ever been laughed at, every time she'd ever been called a fanatic, every time some other parent had said, oh, the three sons of Noah, they've got an old cranky mama and daddy that don't ever let them participate in none of this drinking and eating and partying and reveling and all of that. Don't you know she shook that in the devil's face and said, why, you as a liar, it's worth it all after all. My sons are saved. I'll tell you what we can learn. We can learn to tell the world and its crowd, go ahead and laugh up your sleeve, talk about us, say what you want to about us. One day when we get to heaven and look around and see the family circle complete, we can shout for about the first million years and say that it's been worth it all, that I was a fool for Christ's sake. It's worth every time they made fun of me. It's worth every time they laughed at me. It's worth every time they said my husband was a fool. He didn't know what he was talking about. Out here screaming and hollering, preaching for folks to get saved. Judgment was coming. She said it's worth it all. It's worth it all. Well, I said this applies to a lot of people. I believe this would be a good preacher's wife sermon to preach, Brother Howard, sometimes. Preach to preacher's wives. Devil gives them a fit sometimes. I've had one desire for my girl ever since she was born. One ambition. Since the day we laid her on the altar at Ridgecrest Baptist Church as an infant, dedicated her to God. My one ambition for her life has been for her to live for God. Count for Him. If He, whatever else He wants to do with her life and make out of her life, that's fine with me. If she'd have been a doctor or a lawyer or if she'd been a housewife, I'm honest before God. Those ambitions have never interfered with the ambition that I had the day we laid her on the altar. I can live with any of that as long as she lives for God. That's been my ambition. I know this. She's had a godly mother that's instructed her and influenced her. And I believe that, that these three sons, and come on, Brother Tom, I'm, I'm going to quit. These three sons, that listened to their father and believed the word he preached had entered that ark by faith, I believe they did so much from the influence and the instruction of Noah's wife. Don't you know, growing up during those days, that they'd come home a lot of times and ask their mother, Mother, are those things they're saying about Daddy are they really so? Is Daddy really crazy? Is all this stuff he's preaching, is it really just a bunch of lies and it's not so and, and all of this? I believe she spent some time with them boys, teaching them to believe the Word of God and respect their daddy, who was a godly man. And I believe the end result, as I said, the end result they all enjoyed in the safety of that ark was not solely credited to Noah alone. But I believe that, that much of the credit goes to the support of a godly wife and a godly mother. And we need some mothers like that in our society today. Whatever heads bowed, here I close. I wonder this morning, before we stand and sing in a moment, there might be a mother in this place today or a wife. They'll say, Preacher, 
If I were to die right where I sit this morning, I have no hope of heaven. I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior. Would you please remember me in prayer? Would you slip up a hand for prayer this morning and just by that lifted hand say, remember me. I'm not a Christian. Anywhere in the spirit of the world. I wonder if there might be mothers here today that say, preacher, I know that I've been saved. I know that I'm a Christian. But in all honesty this morning, I am failing miserably as a wife and a mother. I want to be remembered in prayer that I'd have the faith and the courage that I need to live for God, to be supported to the husband that God's given me. Would you slip up a hand for prayer anywhere in this building this morning? God bless you. Anyone else? Would you slip up a hand and say by that lifted hand? God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? God sees the hand this morning. I wonder if there might be husbands here this morning in this place. Say, preacher, I know that God has given me a godly wife. God has given me a godly mother to my children. I have not been appreciative. I have not treated her with the respect that she deserves because of the kind of mother that she is. I want you to pray for me that I'd repent of my ungratefulness and I'd be thankful to God for a godly wife and a godly mother to my children. Are they men in this place this morning that I'm honest enough that you'd slip up a hand for prayer on that kind of proposition this morning? Anywhere in this building, you slip up a hand for prayer. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Father, take the message this morning. As scattered and stammering as it might have been, and I pray that you'll take the truth of it, Lord. And may you apply it to the hearts of those that are here this morning in this building. I pray for every mother, every wife in this place today. I pray for every father that's in this place today, especially those that raise their hand. Lord, help us to see this morning that America is never going to change until our homes change. Help us to see, dear Lord, that our homes are never going to change until husbands and wives change, until children change. Oh, God, forgive us of being so carried off and influenced by a godless world that we've forsaken the principles of the Bible. Help us this morning to have the Bible in our hearts and in our homes and in our land. Bless the invitation. Help people to be obedient to you. And we'll give you praise for it because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.